Hi, this is Mobile Network Comparison and welcome to the next installment in our series on the top 10 tech stories from 2013. Our last video was number 9 in our countdown and we talked about using mobile phones and other electronic devices on flights as well as a way to hack a 747 with just an Android smartphone. So we're working on this in collaboration with my buddy Scotty Ledoux and I'd really encourage you to go check out his channel. He just put up a really awesome video for number 8 in the countdown about wearable tech and in general just has a ton of great videos about mobile phones. But now let's get on with the top tech stories from 2013. Today we have number 7 and we're looking at the custom ROM Cyanogen mod. Cyanogen mod has been at the forefront of open source Android development for many years now. The founder Steve Kondik initially published his first version of the ROM way back in May 2009, and since then the software has grown to an unprecedented degree. It started with just a few developers, but now thousands contribute to the code. So the big story of 2013 initially broke on September the 18th when some massive news just shook up the entire Android community. Steve Kondik announced in the official Cyanogen Mod blog that he'd raised over $7 million of venture capital and that the organisation had incorporated itself. So this money would fund a staff of 15 and a dog who would be able to work on the ROM on a full-time basis. They'd even negotiated a deal with hardware manufacturer Oppo to feature Cyanogen Mod as the default operating system on its new phone. This was all pretty unprecedented in the mobile industry and it's really exciting to anticipate what the future might bring. So Cyanogen Mod have already declared that they intend to become basically the third platform in the smartphone arena after Apple's iOS and Google's official Android builds. However, when this news first came out, it also came along with a healthy dose of controversy. Immediately after the announcement, there were some really pressing questions from the community. Because after all, I mean, we have to realise that this $7 million, it's not a donation without any strings attached. And there's some really actually quite valid concerns about how Cyanogen Mods intends to provide a return to its investors in the future. First of all, it all started when one of the main um, developers on the team left the project following the incorporation. So this guy is called Guillaume Lesniak or Explod Wild, and he completely withdrew all of his code from the Focal Camera app because Cyanogen Mod Incorporated wanted to introduce changes to the licensing agreement. At the time, others were alleging that all the code they'd written for free, you know, in a selfless, altruistic way to further the Cyanogen Mod project, may now be included in this commercial product, and they're not going to benefit from that in any way at all. In fact, Cyanogen Mod are going to be making money off their work. There are also quite a few individuals in the community who had some issue with the lack of communication surrounding the announcement as well as the fact that all these hundreds and thousands of people had been contributing their time and effort to the source code over the years, but it's only the select few who are going to be getting a salary out of the corporation. Furthermore, others who'd worked on the project over the years had always done so on this sort of altruistic good faith assumption that it was an open source project and a not-for-profit project. But following the incorporation and all this money that was coming in, there was quite a lot of controversy about requests to relicense the contributions under a MySQL-esque dual license instead of just play or GPL. And as a result, Steve Klondick had to reassure the community that Cyanogen mods wouldn't be selling out or doing anything drastic like going closed source. But despite this reassurance, there were still really loads of criticisms immediately after this news first broke out. There were suspicions that the entire ROM was going to be dumbed down, as it turned out that the newer releases had certain advanced settings rem removed and even root access was being taken away from the default. So as a result, more and more developers were leaving the project as they saw these changes, which were kind of seen to be intended to make the software more commercially viable rather than um, in the best interest of the actual users. And recently, we've even had interviews with Cyanogen Mod Insiders who've admitted that going forward, there's going to be two separate release branches of the code. They're going to change the name, actually. It's no longer going to be called Cyanogen Mod in an effort to make the whole, the whole product much more marketable. While these fears of commercialization may have some basis and some grounds, in general, the, there's actually huge admiration for what Cyanogen Mod has managed to achieve. After all, it's now clocked over 10 million installs and there's even actually a new simple-to-use installer for both Macs and PCs. 
So we feel that this level of investment and recognition for the ROM shows that big business still has faith in open source projects. And let's be honest, after all, the contributors work on projects like this to make better software and to help the community rather than for the recognition or for the money. This is a really fantastic opportunity for CyanogenMod and it's going to be great to see how it improves and evolves over the coming years. It's clear that the team have got big ideas and big plans. It's notable that they've already contracted Moxie Marlin Spike, who if you don't know him, he's a big name security researcher and also a seriously cool dude to, um, to build a secure messaging app for the new operating system. So hopefully the ROM will continue to get more stable and add some really innovative features to stock Android in the coming months and years. This is a seriously big important step forward and can potentially make a really big difference to the mobile OS environment in the future. If CyanogenMod Mods can reach as many phones as possible, it will be able to rescue millions more people from the tyranny of slow updates and all the bloatware and crap you get from the main carriers and manufacturers official stock ROMs. Okay, so that was our number seven. What do you make of this news? Have you used Cyanogen Mod before? And if so, would this change your opinion anyway? Uh, you should check out our tutorials to install it, but do you think this is a wonderful step forward for open source software or has Steve Klondick sold out everyone's hard work? Is this the beginning of the end as they ditched the ethos behind free and open source software in pursuit of the almighty dollar? Or is this actually a fantastic new way to promote these ideals? Please go ahead, let us know your opinions below and stay tuned for the next video in our countdown. So Scotty Ledoux will be up next with number six, but make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can catch our coverage of the number five biggest tech story from last year. Thanks for watching.